in God's word um, you know if you remember last week we covered the creation account uh, and more on a, an overview of God's creative work uh, this week uh, chapter 2 we kind of we zoom in and uh, on day 6 and we see God create humanity we also see the beginning of God uh, and man's relationship so this is a pretty pivotal part um, pay attention that God actually he makes a covenant with Adam when he places him in the garden don't miss that. Um, and also, you know, you really see God caring here for and providing for his creation. It's, it's really cool. So I would go ahead and uh, open up with the hook question. The hook question is kind of fun. Um, it's, you know, what animal, what's your favorite animal, basically, and why? And then I try to, uh, the follow-up question to that is, if you were Adam seeing that animal for the first time, what would you have named it? So tell the story. that's kind of cool. Uh, I'd, for the transition part, I would go ahead and I would ask someone if they could read uh, Genesis one twenty six through thirty one. Just a brief review of what we uh, saw last week. So after they read that, I'd, I'd basically say something kind of like, "Okay, that was an account of humanity's creation uh, from an overview perspective. Today we're going to zoom down uh, onto." A garden view and look at humanity's creation on a more and here's the story from God's Word here's a more personal look at the creation of heaven and earth when God made the heavens and the earth the earth hadn't grown anything on it because there was uh, no rain to water the plants and no people to plant things but there were some underground springs that did provide water to the land and God formed the man and placed him in a special place it was going to be a garden called Eden. God made trees grow that produced fruit. Yum. A river flowed. Or he also had made um, a special tree and put it in the middle of the garden. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And a river flowed from Eden that branched into four rivers. And, you know, I really can't remember their names right now. But God put man in the garden and told him to take care of it. He told man he could eat from any of the trees except one, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. After a while, God noticed that man, he was kind of lonely and didn't think that that was a good thing. So God formed all the wild animals and birds of the sky from the ground and brought them to the man. And the man named them, but none of the animals were really the man's ideal companion. So the Lord God made man fall asleep hard. Then God took a rib from man. God created the crown of his creation. And when the man woke up and saw what God had made, he was like, whoa, man. He said, she's like me. I'll call her woman because she was made from part of me. And this is why a man leaves his parents. And when he gets married to his wife, they become like one person, like a single unit but they have two distinct personalities. And they were both naked and felt no, zero shame. And that's the story from God's word. So at this point, I would go ahead and ask people to uh, kind of reconstruct it. And I'm real big on helping people get started. You know, it doesn't have to be like a test or a pop quiz. Just say, okay, so the first thing I said is we're gonna take a closer look and, uh, in the garden and uh, God was doing some stuff, what was it? And kind of help him walk through that. Um, and then I would go ahead and um, read it together after that. It's really important. And if you noticed, I actually left something out. Uh, I left out the part that um, if they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they would die. Um, but you should be able to catch that. And so point. after reconstructing it and reading it together, uh, you know, we've got the big four questions, and from the lessons here on out, last week we didn't have this, but this week there's actually extra questions put in there. And so I'll talk about those a little bit with you. Um, the first big question is, you know, what do we learn about God in this story? Well, there's some obvious things. A, he's our creator, uh, he's loving, he's, uh, he, is, he gave us the gift of work. Uh, uh, what do we learn about man? 
or about ourselves in this story, you know what? We're not eternal beings. God is. We're finite beings. Um, God also recognizes that uh, we were designed to be social. Uh, it's not good for man to be alone. So that's kind of an important thing. Uh, it's really a good opportunity to um, maybe talk about uh, relationships between men and women, too, and how, how important they are. Um, number question three is what did you learn new in this story? Or you can even um, actually vary that question a little bit. What did you learn personally from this story? Uh, it kind of depends on your people and stuff. But uh, some people may have not have learned anything new. But you can ask them then, okay, so what did you learn personally from the story? And then the last question, question number four, what should I do differently because of this story? Well, you know, there can be a lot of answers. One thing that this story does personally for me and what I should do differently, I should take more time to thank God for being my creator and the fact that he provides and meets every need that I'll ever have. Uh, that's a big thing. So maybe that's, you know, that's a couple ideas that I have. Um, the extra questions, there are four of them. Whose image was man created in? Um, and this could really actually for a lot of great theological conversations. Uh, if man was created in the image of God and God is spirit, I mean, what's the part of God that we bear, that image? That's an important question to kind of work with people through. Um, the second extra question is, what did God tell man and woman to do? Um, that's important. And I personally would use this question to show that God... Uh, is the author of work. I mean, sometimes we don't look at it. Sometimes we think, oh, m Satan must be the author of work. But no, it's actually God. And he had specific things for them to do. And, um, yeah, not to mention, well, anyways, I'll let you figure that out. <laughs> uh, question number three, what did God give? Uh, oh, wait, it's a repeat. My bad. Uh, question four, what did God say after he made man and woman? So I uh, hope people dig into that a little bit. This is actually the bedrock for, uh, for God's design of marriage. And um, you can see that how important the, the marital relationship is to God. He's the one that instituted uh, and created marriage. So that's another avenue you could really explore um, with uh, maybe one of the questions uh, or just insert in here. It's a great great avenue to um to explore so anyways try to help people remember to do uh, their memory verses um you know and the passage uh, right on the um in the red on that second page because i've moved on to the second page now it says let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging one another hebrews 10 24 and 25 you know, guys, making connections is key to doing life together and growing closer to, to God and each other. So really think about this section and what can we do between groups. Uh, and what can you do outside of group time to spur one another on to uh, love and good deeds, guys? So one of the things to do uh, in between group is sometime this week pray for each person in your group. You know, if you want to let each person know that you're praying for them, great. But I'm, I'm encouraging you to please take some time and sit down and with a list of those people and just pray over them. Just pray for them. And uh, I won't lie to you. I pray for you guys at least twice, three times a week. And uh, sometimes, I mean, the list is long. There's a ton of you guys. But... It, it does me more good, I think, sometimes, because it really humbles me and changes my perspective. And uh, it encourages me to serve you better. So I really want to encourage you to do that. Um, the second thing is pray for someone that you know that is not in your group, but maybe could use a group. So this is thinking outside of your group. This is reaching out. This is keeping being mindful of opportunities for relational evangelism. So I really want to encourage you guys to do that, too. Um, I think that's all I got. Um, I hope things go really good for you. Uh, I hope these videos are helpful. If they're, uh, if they're not or you got suggestions or feedback, I'd love to hear them. So don't hesitate to email me or give me a call. 
Uh, thanks a lot, guys. God bless you, and I'll talk to you soon.